Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Hi fellow mathematicians, welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. Today we're going to be working on how to graph data. If you recall in the previous video, we were working with ordered pairs or coordinate pairs. So let's take a look and see what we're doing today. Before we get started, I want to orient you to the coordinate plane that we have here. Before, we were just working in quadrant one where both x and y have positive values. But as you see here, we have these different, what we call quadrants. There's one, two, three, and four. In quadrant two, we have that x value being negative because if you start at zero and go to the right, which is in the positive direction, it's one, two, three, etc. x, it's all positive numbers. If we go to the left, it's negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So that's why we have this negative value here. In quadrant three, both the x and the y are negative values. So that's how we have negative four and negative four. In quadrant four, the y value is negative, as we can see here. But the x value, one, two, three, four, is positive, yet we're going down here. So we're going to be learning a bit more about that. But over here it says, how can you use a coordinate grid to display data collected in an experiment? Well, let's take a look. This reads here, graph the data on the coordinate grid. And here we have, it says, outdoor temperature. This is in a table. And here's the hour and the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So I have hour one, three, five, seven, and nine. If you look over here, this is the coordinate grid that we have here, or coordinate plane, and it's all positive, so that's quadrant one. And of course, all of our data here is are positive numbers. We have the title to our table here, over here, as the title for our grid. What we want to do is we want to write the ordered pairs for each point. So I have H1 to mean hour one, three, five, seven, and nine. So let's get to work. So for hour one, the temperature is 59 degrees. So we do one hour and then 59, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So 59 is just shy of 60, right? Right about here. Let's take a look at hour three. So hour three, we have 65. So let's go out here. And again, we're going the hour, the time here in hours is in the positive X direction. One, two, three. And then we go up. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And 65 is, is halfway between 60 and 70, so we're going to put it right about here. Hour 5 is 71, so 5 is here. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 1. 71 is just above it. Let's just try it right about there. Let's look at hour 5 right here, and it's 71. So we're going to go here to 5 and go up. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and one is just right above it, right there. Now, our seven is 75. Go over here to seven, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and then there's that 75 mark right there. And then our nine is 77 degrees. So we come over here to our nine and go up 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And 77 is gonna be a little bit it's going to be in between halfway and, and uh, 80 degrees. So we have all our data outlined here. Let's, let's make it a little more clear. I just want to draw a line in between these marks. I'm going to do the best I can to keep it kind of straight here. There we go. And then I want to see something here. I just want to point it out. If you notice, there's an upward trend. However, we can say, hey, it's starting to get a little more flattened out. So it was, it was rising, rising quite a bit there at our, between three and five, and then it's starting to flatten out after nine hours. Now, let's take a look. So again, this is our X, this is our Y. Over here, X and Y. So did we have to write, it says here, write the ordered pairs for each point. Well, do we have to write them down before we do it here? Uh, from the table? No, we can do that afterwards because it's going to be the same. So 159, that's our X, is 159 for hour one. For hour three, X is three, Y is 65. So 
3, 65. Our 5 is 5 and 71. And then our 7 is 7 and 75. And our 9 is 9 and 77. And that matches up with our grid, our graph over here. So 9 and 77. There you go. So here's our ordered pairs or coordinate pairs to determine these points that are in red. We're continuing to graph data. It says here, graph the data on the coordinate grid. So in our table, we have windows repaired as the title of it. And then we have day and total number repaired. So here we have, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five. And those are the days and here's the corresponding there. I'm gonna choose the days as my X value and the total number repaired as my Y value and such. So we can see, you know, this greater slope of, go of it going up. So it's a positive slope. All I need to do is come down here and I'm just gonna label everything. So there's zero and let's see, let's do one, two, three, four, and five. Now I did skip one, you know, just to give, make it so it's a little more clear here. And then for going up, it says total number repaired. So I probably should do these by 10. So I'm going to do 10. That's 20. Let's do 30 here. 40, 50, 60, 70. That's 80. And then 90. Again, that's my Y value. And this is my X value. So I can come over here and I can plot it. So day one, total number repaired. There's 14. So I say day one, there's one, and then 10. And then in between 10 and 20, there's not quite halfway, but I'm going to put a dot there. That's going to be 14. Day two, a total number was 30. So day two, I'm going to come right up here. So 10, 20, 30, put it right there. And then day three is 45. So I can come out here, day three, go 10, 20, 30, 40, and 45 is right in here between 30, uh, 40 and 50. And then day four is 63. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and just a little bit more there, can be 63. And then day five is 79, it's just below 80, so day five, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So I'm just going to bring it right down, right underneath it, right there. Okay. Again, I want to make it a little more clear. Let's just show this off here. So if I go from, if I have you know, day zero and there's zero windows done, I'm going to show this slope of this line coming up and it's growing and it's going up and it's going up and it's going up doesn't have that wiggle right there. It's just, if you have a ruler, it's much easier. So I have my data plotted, but there's something missing here. It's like, well, wait a minute, what's missing? Well, Windows repaired. I need to put this here and say, I'm just gonna do W, Windows repaired. Uh, if I was gonna write it out, just take a little bit longer time here. So the days, so days, I'm just gonna put it down here and put down day, D for day, or I can just write that one out. That one's short days. And then total number repaired. I'm just going to write that as NR. Okay, so now my graph here is properly labeled. I understand where the X is, where the Y is, the number of windows repaired, and the number of days. I can write the ordered pairs for each point. Similar to the last one we just did for graphing that data. So we look at here, day one. So day one is going to be 1, 14. Day two is 2.30. Day three, again, that's 3.45. Day four is 4.63. And day five is going to be 5.79. But wait, the next step, whether it's in homework or something, you may be looking at this graph and, and there will be another question that's asked. Let's take a look at that. So here's the follow-on question. What does the ordered pair 230 tell you about 
the number of windows repaired. Well, let's take a look at that. So 230, that's the total number, right? But wait, is that, were there 30 windows repaired on the second day? No, let's find out how many windows that were repaired. So we can look at the data. So we have 14, so 30 windows. That's uh, the total repaired on day two. And we're going to subtract day one windows, which is 14. Okay, I'm going to borrow a 10 from over here and put it here. So 10 minus 4 is 6. Two tens minus one ten is one ten. So I know that sixteen windows were repaired on day two. That was that was how I would write it out. Sixteen windows were repaired on day two. But if I was a businessman, I could look at other days and say, wait a minute. Uh, day three, there was only fifteen more than day two, and then look over here. There was. Uh, well, not quite. There was 18 on day four, and then it was back down again. It's like, well, wait a minute. Where there was a trend going up, what happened on this day that made it so that they were more productive? Again, looking at the data, trying to interpret it, and seeing where we can make better business decisions. Okay, let's practice. Let's do this real quick. So number one, about how many weeks did it take for Binks the cat to consume 4.5 pounds of food? Four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, or seven weeks? Hmm. So we're trying to find 4.5. So we know that we're looking for 4.5 pounds of food. And up here it says how many weeks? We look over here, it says the amount of cat food consumed in pounds. So this is where we find that 4.5. And that's our known. We have that known. And, it, and we can find that. So 4.5 is between 4 and 5. So I'm going to draw a line right out here. And then if we draw a line down, it's going to tell us that the answer is 6 weeks right there. Look at that. So I can go over here and say 6 weeks because I found it looking at the data. Let's look at number 2. By the end of week 8, how much food had Binks the cat consumed? 2.9 pounds. 4.4 pounds, 6 pounds, or 7.2 pounds. So we're going to be looking at week 8. That's going to be our starting point. And it says, how much food did the cat consume? So we're going to go out here to week 8. And I'm just going to go straight on up until I hit a... There we go. There's that there. And I'm going to come over here. And it tells me Binks consumed six pounds of food total by week eight. So I find my answer right here. There we go. So when we practice this, it's we're looking at the the words in there, we're looking at at the the data and the graph, but it's not just the data. We also have to look at the title. Man of cat food consumed. We have to look at here what's this on the y-axis. What are they looking for there? What's looking for here on the x-axis? And that's going to help us determine the answers to questions like this. But you need to understand how to take this these word problems, so to speak, and, and translate into how that data is being graphed. Until next time, this is Mr. Woods Teaches. And remember, to be a math person, all you have to be is a person that does math. Please like, share, and subscribe.